Hi, this is Barry. Welcome back to the workshop. In this video, I'm going to show you how I took these electronic components from a used treadmill and converted them for use as a variable speed drive on a power tool. Okay, so here are all the parts that I removed from the treadmill. You've got the input and display, and the speed controller for the motor, the motor itself, um, this circuit board, which is a control circuit, and the motor for the incline, which is a linear actuator. Um, I am going to, at the end, I don't want to use this input because it's too big and bulky and I don't need it. Uh, I'm not, certainly not going to use the incline motor. Um, since I'm not using this input, I also don't need this circuit. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to remove those. Uh, but before I get into that, I'll just plug everything in and make sure everything's working. If you are using this off of a treadmill, um, there's this little clip thing that you clip to your body. And then if you fall off or you trip, it pulls this thing out. So you, you need to have something in there in this uh, safety switch. Um, I'm using the cord that came with the treadmill and I'll go ahead and plug it in. And while it boots up this little, the incline motor does this little dance, but I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm mostly concerned with the motor and the variable speed. So I'm gonna uh, just manually set the speed and make sure that the motor spins up and it does. I can adjust the speed. There's a lag there, but it seems to work. <clears throat> so I know everything's working, at least when I start. So hopefully it'll still be working when I'm finished. Um, uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and start removing the parts that I don't need. I'll do those one at a time, you can see that. I'm gonna unplug power just for safety. First thing I'm gonna remove is the incline motor. Um, there's a sensor which looks like I already uh, uh, disconnected, that uh, sends the, the position of the incline uh, to the um, control circuit, which we don't need. And then also there's a white, red, and black on this, and it, uh, it says white neutral, red down, black up. Um, I'm gonna make a note of those because I may wanna use this motor for something later. I wanna control it. So we'll get that out of the way. <coughs> All right, so that shouldn't affect everything. The next thing I need to do is this uh, board has a pulse width modulator. Um, based on the inputs from the input board, it sends a pulse signal to the speed controller, and that's what determines the speed of the motor. And it sends that through these three wires. There's a red, white, and a black here. And I need to, I wanna take those out of the circuit. I need a way of controlling in that. And the way I'm gonna do that is with a potentiometer. In this case, I've got a 10K potentiometer. I've certainly seen other people use different values and I believe that would probably affect the speed. Uh, this is what I have today. May change it later, but um, I, I soldered a white, red, and black lead. The white is the wiper and the red and black are the other two. Uh, if you get it, the polarity switch, then your, your knob will turn left to go faster. Uh, you can just flip those around, which I actually had to do. Um, so what this is going to do is it's going to replace that PWM circuit and I'm just going to disconnect the three wires from the speed controller input, get those out of the way, and connect those red, white, and black. So if, if everything's working correctly, then I should be able to control the speed of the motor using this potentiometer instead of this big clunky board. So let's plug that in right now and make sure that it's still working. Plug that in. Now there are live wires here, so you have to be careful what you're touching. I'm just gonna hold the case for this potentiometer and we'll turn that knob clockwise. So I can turn it on and off and adjust the speed with the potentiometer. So that's exactly what I was looking for. And that also means that I don't need this big clunky board and I don't need this uh, circuit. So I'm gonna remove those. Now this, this input is connected to this uh, wiring harness thing here. So I'm going to get that out of the way. Okay, so the last thing I need to do is uh, get this circuit board out of the way. Both of these 
boards, the speed controller and this board are controlled or are, are powered by 120 volt AC. Uh, there's a white and in this case a blue for the hot. Um, this is just, it has two terminals in, in in it. It says it's an in and an out, but it's really just a parallel. So I should be able to disconnect the hot and the neutral from this board instead of jumpering and then just connect them directly to that. So I'll go ahead and disconnect the hot. And again, this is unplugged. And the neutral. So this is straight from my power cord. And I can hook the neutral straight into this board. And it's marked white. <clears throat> Now for the hot, there's a, a pair of blue wires that go to the motor and I understand that there's a thermal switch in the motor that if the motor overheats, it'll, uh, it'll shut off the power to it. So you can either run it with or without that. I like the idea of having that protection circuit and I don't think it'll affect the power. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it in. So I'm going to go run from the power cord through the motor and fortunately there's a terminal connector here and I'll just plug that in and at this point this board is disconnected so I can get that out of the way. So again, the, the power, the neutral goes straight to this board, the hot goes through that thermal switch on the motor and then into this board. Uh, again, I could, could take that out but I'm going to leave it in. Uh, there is a power switch here on the cord that it says reset so I assume there's some kind of a breaker in there and I'll leave that in the circuit. Okay, so at this point I should have everything I need to, to mount this motor and you know set up the drive and be able to control it with this potentiometer and the speed controller. So let's test that, make sure that we're working. Plugged it in. Again, being careful not to touch anything live. There is a red light here, so I do have power. And if I turn the potentiometer, It does, uh, yeah. So everything's working right there. If I wanted to right now, I could run in this configuration. There are a couple of details that I want to show you though. I'm going to zoom in first and, uh, okay, at this point I've got everything that I need to use this as a variable speed drive. I've got the motor, the speed controller, the potentiometer, there's a main power switch and the power cord. That's really all you need to use this. I, um, of course you have to set up the pulleys or however you're going to use it uh, to drive the, the tool. Um, but this is all you need and the, to get started. There are a couple of enhancements that you might want to consider and I'll show you those. One of them, this is a DC motor and DC works on polarity. So if I reverse the polarity of the inputs to this motor, I should get reverse direction. I'm going to show you that that does in in indeed work. So unplug the power. The white and the, or excuse me, the red and the black wires are the drive for the motor. There's a blue, pair of blue wires here that I mentioned earlier are the uh, thermal switch. So if I switch the polarity of the red and the black, then I should get reverse direction on the motor. So let's plug that in and I'll test it, make sure it works. And turn the potentiometer. And it does uh, spin in the reverse direction. So if I want to have a reversible motor, I can install a double pole, double throw switch in on these two leads in between the speed controller and the drive motor. And uh, there's a basic circuit. I'm not going to show it right now, um, but that you can use to flip the polarity. You need a double pole, double throw switch, and then there's a couple of jumpers that you use. I'm going to switch this back for, for right now. Uh, you do need to know that um, these uh, the flywheel on these is uh, screwed on to the motor reverse with reverse thread. So if you run it backwards, there's a chance that this flywheel could come loose. On my motor, it's really on there. I don't think it's going to go anywhere, and I'm not going to run it reverse very much. Just something you want to consider. Okay, so the other thing that I wanted to show you, besides being able to reverse the polarity and change the direction of the motor, is there's a soft start feature on the speed controller that it's a basically a safety for a treadmill. You don't want a treadmill to just ramp up and go straight to full speed. Um, the way this controller works is you have to start slow and then it'll ramp up slowly. Um, that's kind of an issue with a power tool where you're turning it on and off and you want it to come back up to the same speed and not have to keep um, fiddling with the potentiometer every time. 
and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Plug it in. Now, I've got the potential all the way, all the way off. I'm going to turn it up and get the motor going. So the motor's spinning. I'm going to leave it low so you can hear me, but imagine this is on a, like, say, a wood lathe, and I need to change tools. I want to turn it off for a moment. I turn the switch, the power, to the unit off, and then I, when I turn it back on, nothing happens. In order to get it to spin back up, as it is right now, I have to turn the potentiometer all the way down and then back up. And chances are that I'm not going to bring it back to the exact same speed that it was. So if I every time I stop and start the motor, I've got to adjust the speed, that's going to make the control of the speed a little bit more difficult, especially for settings like a wood lathe where you're stopping and starting pretty often. So what I found, and this is a little research and a little trial and error um, on this unit, um, is if you disconnect the red lead, it has the same effect as turning the potentiometer down, and you can control the on and off of the motor by disconnecting the red lead, and I'll show you. These are live wires, so you have to be careful. Now, I'm not touching any of the 120 volt wires while this is on, but, um, so if I turn the motor on, and it's running, again, I showed you, if I turn it off and on here, I can't get it to start. I have to do the potentiometer, but I'm going to leave the potentiometer on, turn that down so you can hear me, and if I disconnect the red wire, it removes the input signal so there's no longer current going to the motor. When I reconnect the red wire, it turns back on, and since the potentiometer hasn't moved, it's the same speed. So I can turn off and on the motor by uh, removing the red wire from that circuit. So if I want to have an on-off switch that doesn't require modifying the potentiometer, I can put a switch on that red le uh, lead on this potentiometer and turn the motor on and off without having to change the potentiometer settings. Now I'll still have the, the main power switch, which, which will turn off the power to everything, uh, but I'll be able to control the motor on and off without changing the potentiometer. And that's probably what I'm going to end up doing. Uh, you may or may not want to if you care uh, about that speed controller or not, but that's a common issue that I've read about and I believe that's going to be the solution I went with. So everything I've shown you is just the treadmill that I found. This is one example. Uh, your motor and your controller and your circuits uh, may be different, so uh, exercise caution. But I just wanted to show you for this treadmill uh, what I was able to get working as far as the electronics. And hopefully that you'll find that useful if you're trying to reuse a treadmill motor as a variable speed controller. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you found it useful to see how I reuse the electronics from a treadmill uh, to later use as a variable speed drive on a power tool. If you have any questions or comments, please put those in the section below. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.